Welcome to the Cross in the Desert, speaking hope and freedom to Iran. I'm Randy L. Noble, and very glad that you've taken some time out of your busy schedule to meet with me on my program. All of us probably have a pet. It may be a pet goldfish, it may be a cat, or it may be a dog. In my case, let me show you a picture. This is our child, if you will. This is Jessie. She is a 58-pound tan and white border collie, and she is a handful. She's full of energy. She's basically the love of our life. She just turned seven years old. One of the real thrilling moments I have almost every day is meeting with my friends from Iran on Skype or on Viber. And almost every time we meet, they want to say hi to my best friend, Jesse. They love dogs. Even though Jessie stays in a cage because she can't run free in the house by herself or she'll tear up everything, my friends love to see her. And what I do is when I'm on Skype with them, I'll open up the cage door behind me. I'll let Jessie out and toss a treat to her. And they will watch her catch the treat in her mouth because she's quite flexible. And she loves to do things to get her treat. And so my Iranian friends always want to know how Jessie is doing. Well, a dog is man's best friend, and all of us know that. We've heard that cliche again and again. But sad to say, in Iran, dogs are banned. Man's best friend is not Iran's best friend. Man's best friend is banned in Iran. Now, under strict interpretation of Sharia law, Iran, that is the regime there, considers dogs unclean. And just recently they announced some new legislation they're pushing through Parliament that would criminalize the owning and walking of a dog in Iran. So therefore, if you're out with your dog, and you really should known one, you know, but if you're out walking your dog, you can be arrested, you can be fined, you can be publicly lashed 74 times. And when I say something like that, I know you're cringing, saying, you've got to be kidding me. Well, no, I'm not. Men and women are banned in Iran, and so are dogs. And what do I mean by that? Well, look at the way Iran treats their people. Should it shock you that they would think that way of a dog? A dog is an animal. So it would be consistent to be mean to dogs, if you will. If you're a woman in Iran, and you go out with a bad hijab, you show too much hair or too much skin, you can be arrested, you can be fined, you can even be put in prison. And just recently, in the last month, there have been some vicious acid attacks in Isfahan in Iran, whereas a woman would be driving in her car and a motorcyclist would approach and ask her to roll down the window. And as soon as she did, they would toss acid in her face. Just horrific, disfiguring these women for life. So, if that's the way they treat their own in Iran, would it shock you that they treat dogs this way? Well, I looked into this subject a little bit deeper, and the things I found out really astounded me. Number one, I want to say that the Quran does not teach to Muslims that they can't own a pet or an animal. It, it says nothing against that explicitly. But when you look in the Hadith, that is the teachings, the customs, the sayings of Muhammad that are not specifically found in the Quran, you find out how Muhammad felt about animals, specifically dogs. Now, in looking into this, it, it made sense to me why Iran feels that way about dogs too. It says in Bukhari, volume 4, number 448, that, and it's quoting Muhammad, this is from Bukhari, quote, I heard Allah's apostle saying, Angels of mercy, do not enter a house wherein there is a dog or a picture of a living creature. And so, the first place I looked was the Hadith. This is not found in the Quran, and it was very interesting. Muhammad said, look, angels visit us, but they're not going to visit you if you have a picture in your house of an animal or a dog. 
So that's the number one place. There's another volume uh, in the Hadith, Bukhari volume three, and it's saying number 515. It says, Allah's apostle said, whoever keeps a dog, one karat of the reward of his good deeds is deducted daily unless the dog is used for guarding a farm or cattle. Uh, in other words, he who keeps a dog other than meant for watching the herd or for hunting will lose every day out of his deeds equal to two karat. So there's a loss of rewards if you own a dog. Now, interestingly enough, in this last uh, example, volume one, Bukhari, saying number 490, uh, the things which annul the prayers were mentioned before me. They said, prayer is annulled by a dog, a donkey, and a woman, quote, if they pass in front of the praying people. So in other words, according to the Hadith and the sayings of Muhammad, uh, if a dog or a woman walks in front of you when you're praying, your prayers don't count. They're annulled. So it's sad that if you own a dog in Iran, you really are in trouble. It's a crime. Why? Well, the government looks upon this as a symbol of resistance. You're walking a dog. You know you shouldn't do this. What does our law say? They think that most Iranians have become too westernized. They watch way too many movies on the internet. They see too many examples of western society. And so the owning of a dog is considered becoming too western as well. And so therefore, whenever my friends meet with me on Skype and they are excited about Jezzy, they get to watch her and we get to have a good time together. And that's the closest they get to having a dog. Because if they owned one, well, the new legislation says you're in trouble. And it's such a sad thing. Speaking of my friends, I want to introduce you to my new book. This is the cross in the desert, speaking hope and freedom to Iran. And on the front cover of the book, I have a picture of Rahana Jabari. I dedicated this book to Rahana who was recently hanged in Iran for defending herself against a rapist. It was one of the saddest, most tragic day for all human rights activists that have worked so hard. A petition containing over 200,000 signatures was ignored. I dedicated my book to Rahana, but inside this book are the stories of my dear Iranian friends. You see, this book is not about my talent, my gift. It's about them. It's about the stories of their dreams, their struggles, their fears of living behind the Iron Curtain of Iran. But what I want to do in my brief time with you is just to read the introduction and the dedication to Rahana. I want you to hear this, what I wrote for Rahana in my new book. This book is dedicated to the beautiful soul of Rahana Jabari, a 26-year-old suffering martyr who was unjustly executed on October 25, 2014 in Tehran for the crime of self-defense. Rahana was the victim of an unjust and cruel government who punishes and executes women for defending themselves against rape attacks. For over seven years in prison, Rahana endured torture and endless hours of interrogation at the hands of barbaric men. Yet during those terrible years of pain, humiliation, and suffering, Rahana wrote more than 10 prison letters defending herself. In the first letter, Rahana writes, Perhaps someone in this world will hear my cries and feel my pain. I have heard your cries, dear Rahana, and I have felt the burden of your intense pain. I will never forget your suffering, and I will tell the world the truth about your unjust and cruel execution. Just 10 years before her 27th birthday, Rahana stepped into the arms of a loving God. The cruel Iranian regime can no longer touch or hurt her. She is finally free. And this is a book dedicated to Rahana, but it's also a book dedicated to my dear Iranian friends. God has given me a unique privilege to be their voice. One day I hope to meet them face to face. Until that day, I cry out to God for them in prayer. 
There is one particular psalm that I regularly use in my prayer time for my Iranian friends. It is a beautiful promise of deliverance. And as you read their stories in this book, many of their stories written in their own words, and I've tweaked it a little bit to help uh, clarify their English. As you read their stories in this book, I want you to think of the words of this beautiful psalm and remember my dear Iranian friends in your prayers. Psalm 72, verses 12 through 14, is a promise for the deliverance of my dear Iranian friends. Quote, he will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy, and he will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to him. This is a book that I am so excited about because it's a book that puts my Iranian friends in the forefront. You get to meet them personally in my book and you do feel their hurt and pain in the stories that they share with you. But in this book is balanced out with the wonderful promises of God's word and God's deliverance. So there is hope and there is freedom for my Iranian friends in my new book. I want to thank you so much for spending this little time for me. I will see you very soon again on the next edition of The Cross in the Desert. God bless you, and have yourself an incredible week.